We're just curious on how you get involved with uh, Kiswara. Lovely. I got involved with Michelle Chapman, whom I've known for nearly a decade now, and I've learned this much. Michelle Chapman is not happy unless she's helping people or making the world a better place. Those are the two things she does best. And it's like time not spent doing those things is time wasted. So, how did you start this work? My dear friend Karen and I, she uh, just had a real passion for these kids and after she went on a trip and met them at, in an orphanage at Sindiri Village in Malawi. And you can't turn away from that. When you see it and you know what you can do to make things better, it's you have to do it. So we create low-cost volunteer trips for people to go and we teach the kids sports, music, art, and dance. Because I do. It, no, he does amazing. But he does amazing stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. Teamwork. We got to work on the Well, then the other question I was wondering is, since this group um, helps people with sports and education, is there someone that inspired you as a kid for reading and sports or being physically active? I'm a big sports guy, but I tell you, every teacher I had has been an inspiration to me, and it doesn't mean that every teacher I had was a fantastic teacher. Uh, there are some teachers I had where I was looking at that and saying, I could do a better job than that. And uh, a few people know this about me. I was going to be a high school teacher before I got my job. I was so popular in New York City, I, I kind of took a career divergence track. Um, but every teacher I've had has inspired me. Both my parents are high school teachers, and growing up, just out of the town doing errands with my parents, having full-grown adults come up to me and say, I don't know if you remember me, but I was a student in 1970X, and then I had no idea how much you meant to me until later in life. Uh, kids don't know they're being inspired at the moment until later. So it's a bit of a thank you job if you run into those kids like that. And it's amazing. And then for this for the auction, was there any particular item that you donated that uh, I saw the kill? Saw the There's kill. The, uh, the Green Lantern poster. I think I might have brought two more items in the car. If I remember to bring them up. Okay. Uh, so the Green Lantern poster, a couple of frames. Limited uh, edition pieces. So the fan art, that, uh, and I say fan art, it sounds like it's kind of homemade. It's not. People are incredibly well, talented. It sounds amazing people. with Molly and you. There's some amazing stuff going on out there in the, in the fan world. Money. There's some money from the actual film Serenity uh, that uh, if you want to have a prop and take it home from a movie, just flatter the prop guys. Right. Tell them what a great job they did. They hand them two big stacks of cash. Serenity style. And then, uh, yeah, my kilt and uh, a sweater that I wore to some event. I can't remember what. Somebody, somebody said I, you'd never wear that out. And I did. I wore it proudly. There you That's go. What I said. There you go. And then uh, one last little question. Like, so these charities are very important. And is there any other ones that you support and you get behind that are kind of... Other charities? Yeah. Uh, through a good friend of mine, PJ Harsma, he and I uh, started a, a charity called uh, Kids Need to Read. KNTR, yeah. we call it. It was actually just a little thing to try to get books in the hands of kids and into libraries that didn't have any funding and didn't have any books. Uh, so uh, he did a little book tour of it, his own book, a software series. And realize that there's kids out there who are dying to read. They want to do it, and there's no books around. They just have no books. Out. That's just a crime. You know, we've got problems going on here at home. We've got problems going on in Africa. It's kind of just hedging my, hedging my bet. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah.